what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of the Evolution X-Storm this is the version 9.2 and this is based on Android 14 build date here is of 31st July here it shows but this is pretty much the latest build as of now for 2024 you will see a lot of notes you need to update the play integrity fix and all and we have the updated like a camera port and we have to enable some experimental portrait mode fix to actually fix saving photos and this is a dynamic partition based rom guys so if you want to flash this rom on your redmi k20 pro you can check out the flashing guide from the description box below i have made a full guide for actually flashing this rom also you can update it whenever you receive a newer update with that particular guide talking about the about section it still looks similar we have the evolution x logo and we have the evolution x version the july security patch is still here and we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 soviet star the build maintainer is still joho up so huge thanks to the developer of this rom we have the build date as again 30 july 2024 and this is the latest build as of right now if i go into the system update section and here if i check for updates this is the latest update as of right now in the system settings there is a lot of stuff like the gesture settings and all is there we have the quick tap action and you can do these kind of things for the back tap as you can see it is detecting the quick tap over here all of these features should be working great except for the open app i think that's buggy as of right now and we have the quickly open camera is there and we also have the navigation mode you can go into the settings of it and there are plethora of options as you can see there is the IME button space and stuff pill length and radius you can customize and this is the maximum you can go with the pill bar and we have the back gesture height then we have the swipe to invoke assistant as well you need to just set up gemini and after you do that as you can see Gemini will be working fine by swiping up from the corners here it shows circle to search is not available try updating google app for some reason I'll just go back for now and we have the left edge right edge customization right here two button and three button navigation both are there and we also have the one handed mode working perfectly fine as you can see then we have the double tap to check phone as well then the lift to check phone is there as well and it is working with the show ambient I'll show you that and we have the swipe click screenshot you can enable it and if you take a screenshot this is how it works we have the share edit delete google lens and even the capture mode kind of feature a lot of tap to check phone is there but don't get confused just enable these two i would say that should be working perfectly fine and there is the front camera settings and right here we have the pop-up camera sound effects we also have the front camera raised dialog and even the camera led option is there and in the buttons we have the long press power button toggle torch edge long swipe actions are also there and you can customize it between these many options and if you just scroll down more we have the control playback show volume panel on the left side click to take partial screenshot and all of these now let's talk about the home screen well here you will get the pixel launcher so no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but double tap to sleep is there on the status bar and let me show you the screen of f40 here and if i just tap and hold down the few bit scanner it does unlock as you can see so yes screen of f40 and stuff is working if you enable those to the left of the home screen we have the ghost discover page swiping up will get you to the app drawer typical stuff we have the swiping down option for the quick setting panel anywhere and these are the toggles that i have added and you can edit and add even more toggles if you would like to and here in the power menu this is how it looks like if you have advanced reboot enabled you will get the option to directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here and fps info and stuff is there in the quick setting panel and that appears so for gaming and all it will be helpful i guess widgets and stuff are working fine and just notice animations looks really cool and it's very smooth experience overall but if you have used high refresh rate roms on your k20 pro earlier it will definitely feel sluggish because there is no overclocking for the display here it's still running on 60 hertz so that's how it is now let's talk about the camera a bit well you are getting the Leica camera version 5 and in the settings of it, it looks really cool because it has newer things like this customized colors and all is there and every color shows which word is which like the red shows as Leica so these are the things that I'm seeing like a lot newer and it definitely looks more advanced in my opinion there is Xiaomi Pro Cut and stuff there is Dolby Vision and stuff I haven't enabled that but you can try those if you want to and I actually tried to tweak the universal settings and in here I tried to tweak with the parallel processing for portrait mode also i have tried these enable experimental portrait mode fix and stuff but those simply did not work for me i don't know why so that's how it is i'm not really sure what to enable or what not to enable to actually get the rear camera portrait mode pictures working yes as you can see the option is there and you can switch to it but when you click a picture it doesn't show up in the gallery but otherwise normal front camera portrait mode selfies and stuff will be working perfectly fine i have already taken a selfie here let me actually show you as you can see this selfie worked perfectly fine and if i go into the more settings this is a 20 megapixel photo so it's not a like not processed photo or something and here i took another one as you can see the quality is good with the rear camera and stuff for taking normal photos and videos it will be perfectly fine lens switching options are working great no issues and if you swipe up you will get more options like the vlog panorama 
and the sticker avatars and all the other features that you are seeing from here and in the video settings by default you will get the 1080p and 60fps option up to with the rear camera and i think you can force 4k but that option is not there by default you have to go into the settings then tweak it i guess and there is the documents enhanced mode option and stuff and pro mode videos also you can shoot if you would like there is also the night mode the 48 megapixel mode all the things are there so yes the camera is decent in my opinion you can definitely use it if you want to and the shutter speed no issues whatsoever it takes the photos quickly no problems whatsoever now it's time i'll show you the security settings this is how it looks like in the mode settings we have the trust and if you go or scroll down more you will have the high developer status so if some of the apps are not working with the developer options turned on you can definitely hide that particular app right here in the settings also we have the app lock right here so you can add particular apps to this app lock let me show you just locked particular apps and here if i just show you here whatsapp if i open it as you can see the app lock is working perfectly fine even for telegram it's asking me for the app lock and once i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see then only it unlocks so app lock and stuff is working fine there is also a device unlock and in the settings of it we have these kind of things and here we have the fingerprint and face unlock both also we have the watch unlock i have added the fingerprints and also we have the face unlock option i'll set up the face unlock later on First, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and I've already showed you with the screen off, but let me just try it one more time. Yes, and the pickup gesture, if you're wondering, I just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand. As you can see, it shows the lock screen or the clock, I mean, and here just notice the animation. Okay, so for that, I have to actually enable the always on display. Let me just do that quickly. So once I enable always on display, just notice how beautiful it looks and double tap to wake and sleep. It's just very smooth experience, guys. It looks amazing in person in my opinion you should definitely try it by yourself so the always on display definitely looks one of the best for the redmi k20 pro that i have to say here it definitely looks close to a pixel and here tapping on the fingerprint scanner it just straight up unlocks no problems with the fingerprint scanner again time to try with the face unlock and here if i just do that so just complete the setup of the face unlock and we have these kind of options but there is no swipe up option but that's how it is for most ROMs as of right now in Android 14. And here, if I just double tap to wake, as you can see, it unlocks straight up. I don't have to swipe up for anything. As you can see, as soon as I double tap, it just straight up unlocks and goes to the home screen. So face unlock works fine, but yes, you cannot really enable the option to actually swipe up, then only use the face unlock. Now let's talk performance. Well, for that, let me just open a couple of apps and let me show you. I didn't face any kind of RAM management issue or anything in this particular ROM and everything seems smooth enough in my opinion and here if I open all those apps from memory as you can see all the apps opens from memory pretty fine and if I just enable the split screen mode in case you want to see that yes that too as you can see working perfectly fine I can swap the apps just like this so yes all those things the rescaling and all everything is working fine and I can open both of the apps together from the recent panel and all those things are working great no need to worry and even the apps stays in memory no need to worry about it and you can swipe between those apps without any problems so definitely i would say the ram management and the app opening speed on this particular rom is very good no issues whatsoever it doesn't feel like there's that this device is actually almost four to five years old it's insane to see this kind of performance on a four to five year old device and here let me show you the benchmarks of this particular rom Quickly, let me just talk about the basic certifications of this ROM and while I talk about it, let me show you. It has basic and device integrity both, so banking apps will not be a problem on this particular ROM. Also, DRM shows as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in Internet P. In the Google Play Store, it shows device is certified, so that's nice. And in the settings of the Google Photos, it shows this pixel can back up unmuted photos and videos. Let's talk about the settings panel a bit. This is how it looks like and of course, in the app settings, we still have the cloned app, so you can use accounts of whatsapp or facebook or whichever app you would like to we also have a game space so you can add your favorite game over here to have the gaming overlay also inside the connected device you will get the quick share option so quick share is actually working fine here even in the notifications panel if you scroll down you will get the flash notification options and they are working perfectly fine if you enable those now in the battery settings let me show you i'll show you the customization in the last part of the video by the way and here in the battery settings this is how it looks like we got the battery information right here so that you can see the full charging cycle of your battery and i did replace the battery of this device so that's why it's showing like less battery cycles 
and I did about 112 cycles on this battery. So yeah, you can get the max capacity and stuff, but these are all estimated numbers, I guess. And here, battery saver and stuff you can enable, and there is the extreme battery saver as well. The charging control you can enable, but that will actually throttle the charging speed. Do keep that in mind. Now let me talk about the battery life with the Aku battery app I have tested it with. Here, the screen on time actually shows as 7 hours and 50 minutes, so that you can consider at about 8 hours of screen on time. By the way, these are all estimated numbers, but still, I would say in my opinion, the battery life over here that I'm getting, it's really good. The screen off here shows as 25 hours, or you can say more than a day, or the standby time is more than a day, and the combined use is 14 hours for me because I use the device heavily. And the fast charging numbers are on your screen, so you can get an idea about the fast charging speeds on this ROM. In the sound settings, pretty much typical stuff. We have the media calling its volume controls and if you go down more, we have the vibration and haptic feedback. Also, you get the in-call vibration options right here. You can disable or enable whichever you like to and 4G and Volti stuff will be working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. Once you insert a SIM card, I don't have a SIM card in the device for now and we have the vibrate on touching quick setting toggle and the vibrate on volume slider and stuff. All these haptic feedback stuff is there. You can customize it. Then we have the power app volume control. By the way, the volume panel looks like this. You can expand the volume panel once you connect it to your Bluetooth headphone and all. No need to worry. And we have the dial per tone, screen locking sound, tap and click sound, then the screenshot sound. You can disable them. Charging sound is also there. And there is the clear speaker option in case you want to clear your speakers. If it sounds muffled, you can do that from here. And there is the Viper FX. It will definitely give you much more in-depth control of your sound, I guess. And if you're an audiophile, definitely you will love these kind of features. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the adaptive or auto brightness working perfectly fine. No need to worry. Once you enable that, as you can see, the auto brightness is there. Yes, as you can see, it did change a little bit. So yes, auto brightness will be working fine once you enable it, no need to worry. And we have the lock screen settings right here. We have the use device controls from the lock screen and the shortcuts of the lock screen you can also change from right here. Left on right shortcut you can choose. Dynamic lock stuff is there and now playing stuff and the always show time and info is the always on display. And there is a double tap to check phone, lift to check phone and stuff. And show admit option is there. Wake screen for notification option is enabled once you enable that. And we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes. There is also screen attention. And the dark theme is there and here you have the pure black option. You can enable it if you'd like to and I mostly use it with a pure black option. Looks great. There is a display size and text customization as you can see and we have the DPI kind of changing option and we have the night light as well. You can schedule it if you want to even change the intensity. In the live display there is a display mode so you can turn it to outdoor bright sun mode. If I do that, that will be a lot of brightness guys. So I'm just gonna turn it off. There is anti flicker or dimming. There is reading mode as well. Once you enable that, the display will turn into grayscale mode. And we have the color calibration as well. And it is actually working perfectly fine as you can see. And we have the colors. And I have been using it with a boosted, but you can also use it with natural, saturated, adaptive, whichever you like. And there is separate DC dimming. I don't know why they are there separately, like DC dimming and even anti flicker mode. But yeah, those options are there. And we have the peak refresh rate right here, but there is only the 60 hertz option. There is no 90 hertz or anything like that. And we have the double tap to sleep and the wake up on plug right here. Screen protector mode is also there. You can enable it if you want to increase your smoothness of the touches, I guess. Inside wall modes and styles, this is how it looks like. Of course, we are still getting the Android 14 kind of locks in clock styles. By the way, I'm using a wallpaper from the AI wallpaper app and you can definitely use it. I'll link it below. Don't worry. But yes, the lock screen clocks definitely look smooth over here. And we have the wallpaper section right here. And in terms of the wallpapers, we will get the living universe wallpapers or the live wallpapers. No need to worry. We have the more lock screen customization. And inside home screen settings, we have the themed icons enabling option and the app grid you can change up to five by five. Also the accent color, you can actually change it from right here. Now it's time to show you guys the customizations of this ROM. Well, there are huge, huge amount of customization, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Here in the theme section, we have the monitor settings and in here you have the theme styles like the vibrant, tonal spot, expressive and all other options. You can use the vibrant option if you'd like. We have the color source as well. You can have it on both or home wallpaper, lock screen wallpaper, etc. You can customize. We have the luminance customization. You can choose that chroma factor also and even the tin background you can check. And we have the system fonts. Just notice the amount of fonts we have, including the nothing dot font and stuff. Then if you just scroll down, we have the OnePlus options and we have the San Francisco and we have the Sony sketch and even the Samsung options and stuff are there. So yeah, huge amount of font customization. Even the lock screen clock font styles are there. And these are the old Android 13 kind of lock screen clock font styles. If you want to use them, you definitely can. You also have the option to actually go with the Android 14 clocks. That's really nice. We have the system icons and these are the icons you can choose it from. And we also have the icon shapes as well. 
even the signal icon styles are there plethora of options just notice i have to scroll through it and even the wi-fi icon styles are there and again i have to scroll through that page we have the navigation bar icons and also the udfps icon you can actually customize from here if you don't like the default one you can go with the other options like the pokemon and we have the xiaomi one we have the me logo and we have the other options just notice the huge huge amount of options including with the evolution x logo that's a nice touch the brightness slider style you can also change and that is this quick setting panel brightness slider style you can actually change that so that's nice let me go back we have the udfps animations as well so you can change whichever animation you would like like if i just select this mclaren one and while i'm doing that let me just select another figment scanner style and here if i show you from here in the lock screen this is how it looks and once i try to unlock just notice how beautiful that looks so you can have these kind of customizations on latest android 14 rom that's awesome screen of animation is there as well see at your scale inside lock screen we have the charging stats and the pulse and the ripple animation and the screen of udps or the screen of fod you have to enable that to actually get that feature working and we have the pocket detection as well in case you need that you can enable that in the status bar we have the brightness control so sliding a finger on the status bar adjust the brightness so that feature is still there we have the quick pull down as well in the status bar tuner option is there headset blue to the extra icons as usual and we have the battery styles yes there are not much because they have been removed recently because they were causing some issues maybe in future updates we will be getting that because this rom is very consistent with updates but there is only the icon portrait and circle i have been using it with the icon portrait and you can change the battery percentage or enable the battery percentage next to the icon if you would like clock and date customization is there and it is thorough guys there is background chip and there is the mpm style date style etc you can also enable everything is there no need to worry we have the 4g icon wi-fi standards you can enable bluetooth battery stats is there you can enable that and we have the network traffic indicator and we have the notification count screen projection battery bar also is there in the quick settings we have the quick setting tile styles and these are the options for that even the panel styles you can change and the height level option is there if you scroll down mode we have the brightness slider show always and even the position you can change it to bottom we have the data usage then the floating clear all button then we have the secure quick sending required unlock and stuff all these privacy kind of features bluetooth always on is there you can enable that if you'd like in the notifications we have the heads up then the island notification is there you can disable the now playing if you'd like to less boring heads up and we have the edge lighting option you can enable that kill app and the alert when display is on option is there in the power menu we have the power menu actions you can customize that and we have the show on secure lock screen option and of course that advanced reboot is there inside this power menu over here as you can see we have the buttons right here we have the layout and the invert layout option then in the miscellaneous settings we have the components spoofing and then there is the play integrity fix pixel props storage encryption google photo spoof and we have the higher fps in games also the snapchat spoof is there we have the ignore wallpaper dimming and we have the unlimited screen record also we have the ignore window secure flags by the way in terms of the screen recording we have this single app and the entire screen kind of feature and you can change the quality also of the recording also we have the record audio of device and microphone both we have the show touches on screen all these kind of fancy features are there for the screen recording and that's it pretty much about the customization section of this evolution x rom so if you ask me personally definitely evolution x has been really one of my favorite roms and even for k20 pro i can say that that's just awesome that this rom is available for these particular devices and you can get a pixel kind of experience overall from your device and even more features you will get over here you know which i'm talking about so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you want them to try evolution x rom on their redmi k20 pro please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kd index signing off today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now